Oh, wait, 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 wait. I need to enable the audio first. Talk, talk. Keep Opens. talking so they can test. Hello, hello. Sing, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Excellent. Keep going. Audio, audio, audio. What? Okay. Talk, talk, talk. 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 Talk, talk
Our production is mustgoware.sg. A star for mustgoware. <laughs> so the staging right was uh, muskgoware.com. And the reason why this happened right was because uh like when my colleague came over and was asking, hey uh, what domain should we buy? You know, then the designer said, hey, let's buy a uh, mask go wear, right? Because it's easy for people to remember. And I was just joking him now, just saying, hey, maybe we should buy a like muskgoware.com la. Then we built a website to basically track Elon's mass movement. <laughs> right. So, <clears throat> so this guy, uh, yeah, so, so he was like, ah, you know, he, he knew that it was a joke, la, but when he bought the domain, right, he spelled wrong. La. So that's, that's how we ended up with uh, muskgoware.com. So if all else fails, right, we can actually just, <laughs> yeah, so if all else fails, right, honestly, we can just uh, really build a website to track Elon Musk. La. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, um, I don't know where the taxpayer money is going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think probably sometime in the afternoon that's where we realised that hey, actually it's not true that you can collect from um, any community centre or like residence, mm-hmm. I forgot was it committee or something, right? And actually you can only collect from the ones at your district. And the reason for this is because of logistics. Mm-hmm. So imagine if everyone goes to like Boon Lay to go and collect all the masks, right? Then there, there needs to be some logistic effort to transfer uh, extra stock from the other CCs to that location. Lah. So um, because of concerns like that, that's why they yeah, that's why we are, we are like tied to collect from the CC, a dedicated CC. Lah. Yeah. But we also still had the assumption that on the ground, uh, they are still able to provide real-time updates. So then our design changed to, to something like this. So on the 31st gen, um, that's where we got the data set. Uh, and the data set is actually a mapping of residential poster code to CC and something new called RN, which like we have no idea what, what it was. Uh, what's interesting is it's just a mapping to the name, but there was no address. And this is also where we start to learn that, oh, actually there's more um, collection points than just the community center. So I don't know why they make things so complicated, but in Singapore, apparently we have a community center, we have residence committee, we have a neighborhood committees, and then we have a residence network. So community center is, uh, most of us know what is it, right? The other three, right? Actually, they are all the same thing. The only difference is one is meant for private estate, one is meant for public estate, and one is just a combination of both. Nice. So this is also where we realize, right, uh, that these three uh, R C N C R N, right, is actually uh, volunteer based. You know, it's not uh, like uh, someone from the government that's like running this. Someone from the government that's running this. Thank you. <laughs> right. So this is also where we realize that hey, actually real time update uh, might not be realistic. Because these are volunteers and typically they're elderly. So if you want them to use a Google Sheets, it's a bit hard. Lah. And then at the same time, it's volunteer basis, right? So the opening hours is random. The location also random. Can be at your, like some uh, park somewhere, uh, can be at below your void deck. Uh, everything's random, lah, right? And then there's also concerns like, what if there's a long queue? So if there's a long queue, will, will these people, like these volunteers still bother to update? Lah? Right, and there's also um, public perception. Uh. If we display a long wait time, how would the public feel? Would it mean that uh, there's a lot of people rushing to collect masks? You know, then it creates panic. Or like, what if it's shown that the mask stock is low, right? So things like that. Uh, that's where we realize, not realistic. Uh. So that's where you also stop work. Then at 8 p.m., uh, I went for a meeting with my Senior director, director, assistant director. Right? <laughs> yeah. So we met the various stakeholders, la, like your PA, la, SAF, la, whatever, whatever. La. Then we kind of show them what we have. And then it us, okay, so we need to remove like all this real-time update thing. But they still want the website to display where to collect. Nice. We also realized that it's a decentralized operation. La, which means uh, actually there isn't like a single point of contact that, that like handles this whole distribution. La. It's more like they just tell all the various districts, right? Uh, your uh, own, ta- own target carry on. You know, that everyone, right, go and think of how they want to distribute. Some people send people to the to like uh, residence house to distribute the mask. You know, some people say, oh, you all come and collect. 
at here, at there, blah, blah, blah. And there's one thing that uh, our town councils do very well. Uh, what they do very well, right, is to create posters. <laughs> <coughs> Everything uh, is about posters, right? So this is what happens, uh, right? So this is from uh, various districts. Everyone creates a poster. You look at the format, right? Everyone's different. Everyone has a different format. Okay? So on our end, right? Now we need a website to display these, all these locations. And your mind is like, oh my god, how do we translate this into like a structured data form? Right? So, wow, this one really is it's really xiao liao la. Like, we have no idea how we're going to do it. Right? Our initial <laughs> plan was to do a reverse mapping. Okay, so reverse mapping uh, means, uh, okay, so based on this, like, maybe one of these, uh, you're supposed to, you're at block, what, 572 Woodlands, whatever, whatever right, uh, coverage, don't know what, la, uh, very hard to understand. But basically, based on the block number, right, we thought, hey, maybe we can reverse map this uh, to, a, to a residential poster code. Then we can map back to our data set. But we realized it's very ridiculous, la, because uh, it could be at this block, you could go to here to collect, but the street name will be different. Uh. So you need someone, right, to be damn smart in, like, uh, all the district segregation Singapore in Singapore and postal codes and all kind of things, right, in order to do the mapping correctly. Uh. Yeah. So, and uh, uh, as we tried, we realized it's quite impossible. And then I spoke to my boss and I was telling him, hey, like, jokingly, I was just telling him, oh, why don't we just map it to the district, then we just display all the poster. Right. And that's where he said, hey, actually, that's a, not a bad idea. Nice. Yeah, so that, then, so that's, that's why uh, must go away in the end, right? What happened was when you enter your postal code, right? You see yeah, a whole bunch of posters. Yeah. La. Good, <laughs> good, sir. Good, yeah. Right. good job. So, uh, yeah, so that's uh, myself. I was working on the front end. We actually called back uh, two back-end engineers because we need to, like, store posters now la, in, in, like, S3 or something. And uh, we have our senior director, director, assistant director, and a so team of people. The, the tweet director do what one? Ah, yeah. So I'll explain. This one also <laughs> quite interesting, ah, because you never. I don't know, lah. Like first time I see director do like really paper paper kind of work, lah. They go do what? Yeah, go Of course, ah. Hey, all night, eh. They were all night there with us. Okay, okay. Yeah. Hey, go so. Eh. <laughs> Come, continue. Okay, so we have um like a deputy deputy secretary who activated like her team of people. So it's like eleven p.m. Uh. Oh, wow. Essentially, what this team of people were doing, they were going on social media, your Facebook, your WhatsApp, uh, you know, like maybe like their void deck, or whatever. They are taking photos of all these posters and sending to our three directors. And what our three directors are doing, right? They are trying to, yeah, they are essentially doing Photoshop. They are like stitching the photos together, you know, and then tagging it. Ah, this is for like Emirati, this is for blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So basically, that's what we did uh, until about. 4 a.m., 5 a.m. Ah, this is this is a uh, kind of like our text tag. Uh. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we use Google Sheets, and this is actually my Google Drive account. Uh, this is someone else's Google Drive account. Ah, sorry lah, like you know, during crunch time, uh, yeah, anything goes lah. Yeah, so um, basically, this is where the residential poster code um, mapping to the to the CC to the district is at. And then it will be constantly uploaded to uh, S3 bucket, right? And then on the other end, uh, this is basically the, the top part is where we store the photo set. La. So when the API call is made, it will query and like find out which, which uh, district you're at, and then you're going to retrieve the, the, the posters. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so then we went live, right? So. Yeah, 4 a.m., you know, we're like, oh, finally go live, right? We went for McDonald's, uh, went back home, I think, 7 a.m., and then we got caught back at 9 because apparently a lot of people were visiting the website. Um, but there were a series of issues. Uh, citizens thought it was a fake website because we didn't put the mask head uh, or, or, like, our, oh, our GovTech no logo. Government, no government yeah. logo. <laughs> yeah, but there's reason for that. La. I'll explain why, la, okay? Uh, secondly, right, uh, they thought it was a fake website because it's a .sg domain and it's not like a .gov.sg domain, right? And there's also cases where uh, some districts have no posters. Some district actually on Friday night when we were scraping their social media, 
they were changing their photos. Oh. So then we, dis- we were displaying the wrong information. God. There are things like um, wrong mapping from uh, the poster to the district and some poster code cannot be found. So there's a lot of issues with the data, right? So um, during that day, what happened was uh, our senior director activated like 50 people to come down uh, come down to office mm-hmm. and basically do uh, like updating the posters and uh, adding more poster codes that are missing. So why is there no mass hate or logo? Uh, <laughs> it's because when we did this must go away website and we realized that, oh my God, we have to display a list of posters and they are pretty ugly posters. <laughs> We didn't want to associate it with Gothic. <laughs> yeah, so actually that's the real reason. La. We, 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 yeah, when we did it, we were like, oh my god, this is like so ugly. Yeah. But then of course after that, we have to add it in. La. Why not uh, .gov.sg domain? Because it just takes a longer time to procure. La, which we actually, Eventually we did it and uh, yeah. So uh, there were actually a, a ton of improvements that we did to the website. La, right? Um, we added like IE support, uh, Optimized performance, uh, ad analytics. We actually switched from um, stitched images because people were complaining that actually they don't understand like having a, all these posters stitched together. So we switched to a carousel. But carousel also has its own issues because then people say they cannot find what they want. They didn't know that you can press the the buttons left and right to view different posters. Uh. Yeah. Then we so we make those buttons more prominent. Uh, we added uh, language translation, security, and just a, a whole ton of stuff. La. In total, that Saturday, I think we did about 40 deployments to the, just to the website alone. Right. The, the poster site uh, is, yeah, that's, that's, that has always been going on. That's yeah. production. <clears throat> yeah, so um, post 9 Feb, um, so post 9 Feb, what happened is they said that, okay, so all these, uh, what, RC, NC, RN, right, uh, no longer you can collect from there. You can only collect from CC, like your community centers. Mm. Uh, and that's where we switch from the posters back to uh, table form. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically um, pretty much the story of Must Go Wear. Mm. Um, there is a few other Go Wears that's going on right now. Um, we have Flu Go Wear, which is to find like this PHPC is like public health preparedness clinic something like that basically it's just clinics that are prepared for these kind of outbreaks mm. yeah so you can search uh, based on your location what's the nearest one you can go blah 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 mm. we have a temperature go where which is actually a internal product for temperature declaration mm. uh, it'll roll out soon to like various uh, other agencies mm. uh, not sure if it will go public don't know yet mm. um, then there's actually a whole bunch of other things that I cannot confirm that no, whether I. they are going to be released soon, so I'll just say that they are all ideas. <clears throat> um, one of it is uh, uh, the first one. I can tell you that uh, it's not happening already. So the first one is uh, they had this idea where we scan our identity card, and then you're entitled to buy like two boxes of masks. And uh, mm-hmm. so there's a team that was working on that, but then eventually they scrapped this off. Mm-hmm. There is a contact tracing idea mm. uh, using like your mobile app and Bluetooth, somehow they can do contact tracing. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay, uh, idea, idea. Okay. <laughs> so, then there's also poster generation, right? Because we realized all the ugly posters generated by town council stuff. So we wanted a way to like kind of help them out to standardize things. Oh, you still have to eh. Tomorrow you Sorry, I'm just like uh, <laughs> being very <laughs> brutally <laughs> honest. Video, it's okay, you are safe. Yeah, okay. So, um, then there's also this idea, right? That um, yeah, maybe like if there's ever in the future like another mass distribution or whatever, maybe you want to have another feature where you can state that you want to give your mask away to oh, like the okay, okay, you know okay. yeah people mm-hmm. who need it more or whatever. Okay. Uh, ah yeah, so this is a sample of temperature go where uh, actually ah yeah, a bit lame lah, but but basically it's just. You declare your temperature law. Yeah, okay. Next. Uh, this is some of the other stuff that we did. Uh, this was the first basic concept. Uh, yeah, and basically when you type, right, then the face will just like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then we added this to uh, Mask Wear, but of course we make it look nicer. Lah. Oh, so cute. Right. So when you type it something that... <laughs> 
when you type something that it doesn't recognize or like some invalid code or whatever, right? Uh, then you question mark, eh, what's happening? Confused. Yeah. Nice. Then we also added it to uh, Flugoware. Slightly different. This is uh, basically following the first one, uh, the same concept. Uh. Too long, then you question mark. Yeah. Okay, so learning points. Uh, actually, a lot of things to learn. Uh. Um, but I guess, to me, the most important part was really about um, optimizing for performance and skill. Uh, there's this guy called uh, Alex Russell, senior staff, software engineer, uh, Chrome project, Fugu, whatever. Lah. Okay, but basically, it's something to do with PWAs, and he gave this very good talk lah, okay, at, a, at a Frontiers conference. It has to do with um, why we have to optimize for performance, right? And uh, TLDR is... Uh, it, it, this, is, this is more towards mobile. Lah. So, TLDR is uh, we are on a 4G network, but we're not really 4G because congest congested, lah. a lot of people are on it, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's also people who have like budget phones, which doesn't have a uh, very high processing power. Mm -hmm. uh, and this affects um, their experience. Mm -hmm. So, maybe on an iPhone, a website could take like 10 seconds to load. But people on budget phones, right, it could take them 30 seconds to load, mm. right? And then there's also things like uh, wasting people's data, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So back to uh, why, why I brought this up uh, is because, uh, give you some statistics first. For Flugoware, or this is kind of a mix of both. Uh, Maskoware has mm. over 1 million visits. Uh, visits is like a, in a 30-minute session. Flugoware, uh, you know, 1,002 million page views and, you know, all that kind of things. Uh. But basically, what I want to show here is that most people actually access it through the mobile phone. Okay, so that's the first point. Actually, it's the same for Musk A lot of people also access through mobile phone. Uh, uh, other is actually desktop. Uh, I don't know why the analytics consider it as other. Uh, and apparently got people oh. access through television also. Gaming console! I have no idea how to do it. switch like <coughs> See, like, okay. CS halfway. Uh, anyway, <laughs> sorry, please continue, sir. Yeah. Uh, okay, so mobile devices, there's actually a ton of mobile devices, but uh, these are some of the considered the more lower end mobile devices that don't really have like really good processing power. Mm -hmm. So, based on statistics, right, actually, we do have uh, some users in Singapore uh, that are using phones that are mm. not so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so this is where I have to admit, right? Uh, we actually mess things up. Um, so, so back to performance, right? Uh, I guess the very common sense thing, right, is to optimize your images, like, right? Now your whole set poster, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, that one I a bit broken. Okay, but so for Flugo, where um, what happened was. Uh, I did a lighthouse check and actually I realized that there was one point in time that uh, our images added up to 6.8 megabyte. Um, and then another thing we realized is that we didn't turn on cache. So oh. every time the person visits the website, oh, we're eating 6.8 uh, uh, megabytes. Yeah. So of course when I saw that, then I was like kind of fuming la, and because uh, I did the fix. La. But anyway, point here is, uh, yeah, you can use tools like your Chrome or Deep Lighthouse to check for these kind of things. Mm -hmm. There's also a Lighthouse CI you can actually integrate with like your build plan and like to flag things out. Mm -hmm. uh, what's interesting is there's this thing called a feature policy. Okay, uh, this one. Experimental feature. But basically, it can help you to detect oversized images. Mm -hmm. And if it's oversized, right, over a certain threshold, you will replace it with like a placeholder and then they will basically warn you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, maybe something to look for in the future. Yeah. So I think there's like a whole bunch of stuff here. Mm. Yeah, you guys can check this out if you're interested. Okay. So uh, moving on. Okay, yeah. Use cache control, like what I mentioned earlier. La. But you need to know what you're doing. Uh. Don't cache the wrong thing. Uh. Um, uh, you can also remove unused CSS. So the thing about Tailwind, right? Because it's a, the concept is to create many, many utilities that you can use. Uh, but the problem with that is that the package size is pretty huge. 
So one way to get around it, right, is you can use uh, something called Purge CSS, which will basically remove all your unused CSS. Then there's like other stuff like, like you can use like uh, Svelte, which is actually very performant. Uh, lazy loading, you can use a Webpack analyzer to analyze your, your JavaScript libraries and all kind of things. Like. Yeah. So, uh, okay, last slide. No, second last slide. Okay, so basically, right, uh, I'm basically from GovTech Singapore. La, so uh, our goal is engineering digital government making lives better. Right. Uh, we are constantly looking for uh, software engineers, designers, whatever. La. So yeah, if you're interested, you can come join us. Uh. This picture here um, is actually a tool that we're building for IC. Actually, it's out already. La. We actually built it for ICA. But essentially, when you upload your photo, right? Last time, I don't know if you all used the ICA system, right? They have this like very old legacy tool that you need to use to like crop the images and like adjust coloring and all kinds of things, right? Now it's all automated. You upload your photo, we detect the face, we crop around the face, we check whether your head is tilted, we check whether your head is turned, we check whether we check for blurness, we cut we uh, fix the brightness. We also do the most interesting is uh, background replacement. So if you deal with images, I think this will be very interesting because in the first place, how do you know what's the background, right? Mm. So if you're interested, uh, come join us, la, then you find out. Mm. Okay, okay, so uh, last slide, last slide. Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, just if you're interested, just drop me an email, la, official email, uh, dave <laughs> underscore <laughs> qua at, daf, at tech dot gaf dot <laughs> Unofficial email is just kwadev at gmail.com. You want to remember very easy. Uh. So in, in Hokkien, right? Kwa means C. C, uh, right? So kwadev, see me. Uh, okay? <laughs> Look for Dave. Okay. <laughs> Go with the band. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, everybody clap, clap. Because uh, this fine gentleman is the ultimate, ultimate Singlish speaker. Uh, I approve. Also, uh, it's bonus season, year end. I think I, uh, Gav, Gav Tech give this man a bonus. Uh, <laughs> excellent, excellent, sir. You must come back again, huh? <laughs> you need, yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on. Um, okay, sir, so you have short, short stop sharing your screen. 